friends, it's Teresa and welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be me doing books as songs from Taylor Swift's new red, parentheses, Taylor's version. Super excited for this. I have 28 books for you guys and you're probably like, Teresa, are 30 songs. Yes, but one is an acoustic version of State of Grace and the other one is a 10 minute of All Too Well. And I, in my little genius brain, managed to go ahead and wrap up both the short version and the long version into one book. Let's just kind of get into it, and if you guys like this kind of content from me, hit like, subscribe, and comment what your thoughts are on my choices, if you guys enjoy them, or if you guys want more of these books, for, these videos for me. I've only done two so far on my channel, this will have been my third, and I think 30 books have filled up my quota that I can do for this for the year. So, if you guys have any more, I also do like TV shows, other things, I did Harry Styles, um, so just let me know, and I can go ahead and start working on them for you in the new year. So, let's go. So, we all have heard about it now. Taylor Swift's version of Red has been released, and naturally I wanted to hop on and make a list of books that I think fit the state of this, the theme of the song. Now, I have also pulled up the lyrics for all said songs because I can't play all 30 songs for y'all because that's a little too much for me and copyright issues will just be up the wazoo at that point. I don't know, even know I'll be able to get the song uploaded. But I did find 28 books that'll fit this t this situation. I, I, I will throw up the lyrics on here that I'm referring to that I think will fit the book very well. But let's just kind of start with the first song on the album and the one with an acoustic version which is State of Grace. Like I, I, I want to preface this that Red was not my favorite album out of Taylor's like version, like Taylor's older works because I was in that point in my life where I was, I had reached peak misogyny. Cats are playing around my book towers, I'm scared. Peak misogyny and I was like I'm done with Taylor Swift, blah 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 blah. So Red was the one that I kind of skipped for me. So a lot of these songs for me were fairly new. I have listened to like clearly like the hit, like 22, Red, Begin Again. I also listened to Girl at Home, Everything Has Changed, Last Time, Holy Ground. But I didn't listen to like kind of like the more cult classics. So again, a lot of these songs were a little newer to me. Yes, I did in fact listen to them before the, re release, the release happened, but you know, still. But like I said, the, the first song fit me State of Grace. And this one, it... The one that kind of got me was the very, like, the chorus. It's like the chorus and then I believe the bridge. Where it says, And I never, never saw you coming. I'll never, ever, never be the same. This is a State of Grace. This is the world worthwhile fight. This is the Love is a Ruthless Game. Unless you play it good and right. These are the hands of fate. You're my Achilles seal. This is the golden age of something good and real. But I knew immediately what book I wanted to choose for this. It, it literally like hit me like super fast when I was thinking of this video. I was listening to State of Grace first. I went in order. But the book that hit me that, that actually really hit and really I think fit this like the style of the book. At the song I mean. Was They Both Die at the End by Adam Silvera. This is a YA kind of futuristic contemporary romance novel following these two young boys who find out when they're supposed to die. Now in this world there's a thing called, I believe, death cast that calls you and tells you when you're gonna die, how many hours you have left, yada yada yada. Now there's kind of also, on the back hand, there's also a kind of like almost Tinder app where you can meet other people dying within the same time frame, you know, console yourself in these time of grief. And now Rufus and Matteo actually meet because of this and they start to, you know, fall in love. I think this is a perfect like situation. Not only does it fit the song State of Grace because they are during their grace period before they kind of inevitably kick the bucket, but they literally had no idea each other were coming. They didn't know they were going to fall in love with each other. They didn't know kind of that this romance made their very short lives feel worthwhile and that they were willing to do anything and everything to keep themselves together and be in love. It was such a good read. It is like top two of my favorite Adam Silvera books. Top one being More Happy Than Not, which I will always love from the bottom of my heart. Like I recommend this book to people who are looking to Adam Silvera but don't want to like read something a little heavier, like More Happy Than Not, because I think it's a little heavier than this one. But it's just so good and I think it fits State of Grace so well. Where like I said, they, these two characters are currently in a state of grace with their lives and this, this love affair of theirs just kind of comes in unexpectedly and shifts their kind of view on everything. The next song on the album is Red, and these lyrics are basically like just talking about like 
the kind of love you had and the love you felt. But yeah, it's basically like this, this like describing all of the like the phases of love all the way to the end and kind of like that mess and that very encompassing feeling i think the book that suits for that because just this love feel the song feels like a very encompassing and very quick love um reminds me of these violent lights by chloe gong this is a why a historical romance following it, uh, it's a retelling of romeo and juliet this is set in 1920 shanghai with rome with Juliet and Roma, Roma being Romeo, coming back together after being, I think, a couple of years from being separated, only to and hating each other from being like part of separate gangs, only to have to force to be work together when this seeming pandemic sweeps across their nation and their city, and basically causes people to kill themselves by clawing at their throats or ripping their heads open. It's very graphic. Lots of trigger warnings on this one. Trigger warnings for. Murder, death, gore, assassination. I believe I have a video review of this. So I will leave that link down below along with any other videos I have, the, any other reviews that I have mentioned in this book and Goodreads links for y'all to peruse. But I think it fits it really well just because we, throughout the Song of Red, we see kind of the different phases of love and like how like it's so encompassing and then when it's gone it's like all the colors just kind of ripped from you and i think this fits this romance very well because we do get to see the aftermath of their romance which is where in that instance kind of that like missing piece and like we get to see flashbacks of their ever encompassing love and i think it just suits the vibe very well considering we see this couple go from hating each other to loving each other again to hating each other so it just kind of floods through all those phases of love that you would think that happen for, especially for a young kid they're like almost i think like 17 18 so the next song is treacherous and this one i went with the lyric specifically that goes this slope is treacherous this path is reckless the slope is treacherous and i i like it I can't decide if it's a choice getting swept away. I hear the sound of my own voice asking you to stay. And we are all skin, we are is skin and bone, trying to get along, forever going with the flow, but your friction. This one just kind of reminds me of like a love that you don't, you realize probably isn't best for you. Doesn't follow. This is basically about a love that like, you know, isn't good for you. You know it's not good for you, but somehow you just kind of get swept along in the process and you find yourself kind of enjoying it. But this one is a little hard and not because it was, I had to find like kind of like an almost enemies to lover situation and while it's not hard to find that I just needed one that fit so I ended up going with A Violet Fire by Kelsey Quick this is a YA dystopian fantasy I'd like to say following this new world where vampires have taken over and humans are basically just there for breeding and blood bags and this young girl Waverly kind of is in the middle of it and ends up starting to fall for the for the enemy that she did not want to fall for, the vampire. I think this book is a perfect fit because I feel like the song Treacherous, like you, like your gut is telling you, no, don't do it. No, it's not good for you. It'll cause you a lot of pain, but somehow you just end up getting swept up in it and you end up enjoying it, which is like basically this book. Like she, she has like all her red flags are firing, all of her gut feelings are telling her no, this is bad. And she's still kind of like, you know, I'm going to go with it and it's okay. Does it end up okay? Not so much, but you know, it is what it is. So I think this is a perfect fit for it. It just has like the enemies to lovers kind of like, no, you're bad for me, but also I'm really intrigued. Just it suits it very well. The next one is I Knew You Were Troubled. This is one of the singles from the original release. Everyone knows it. There's a goat version. But this bit song is basically, I'm not even going to talk about lyrics because you can probably hear in your head right now. But this is basically about like a romance where you met the person and you knew that they were going to cause some kind of chaos in your life. Whether it was like a good kind of chaos or they were going to end up destroying your entire being and just muck up your entire life. Who knows? Because you don't. But this is that what, what the song is about. And I kind of, this was a really like semi easy and semi hard decision for me. And I ended up going with Cersei by Madeline Miller. This is an adult um, retelling of the Cersei myth, but where it focuses on the Cersei myth. And Cersei is one of the first witches in Greek mythology. One of. I want, it, it works perfectly for both Cersei and literally every single man she comes in contact to. She's not only trouble because she does have a very skewed view of love and relationships and just relationships in general, but then on top of that, the men that come into her life 
really muck up her life in the worst way possible and she turns them into pigs so it's just trouble from all fronts and i think that anyone who runs into cersei probably can sense the gut feeling of like don't do it and then anyone who runs into people like odysseus and hermes and whoever else was in this book was like oh you bad you bad this was the most difficult thing i've ever had to do and i still feel like i chose the wrong book for it but this is the kind of like the best book that i have that really just encompasses what this means now the next song as we all know is all too well now like i said in the beginning i managed to find a song or find a book that encompasses both the short and the long version i don't know how but we're gonna call it what it is i am a genius this was actually really difficult for me to choose because i couldn't find one that really went with the theme of a breakup such a very toxic breakup at that some of the lyrics that i went with is is um that reminds you of innocence smells like me maybe we got lost in translation maybe you were, i was asking for too much maybe this thing was a masterpiece before you tore it all apart entire thing just the entire song basically the song is all about just kind of that loss of innocence that loss of the concept of like a really fairy tale almost love and just a very toxic an unhealthy relationship that came out of it again this was a very difficult decision it's gonna mess up my white balance like no other but i went with the spellbook of a lost and found by moira Fowley doyle i recently read this this year and it just when you read it it clicks this is a ya fabulism contemporary novel following this young group of teens who find themselves missing something now whether it's their innocence or a physical item or something in their memory they're just missing it and in this process of trying to figure out what happened they find a spell book that allows them to call back these missing items but when they call it back the, it, some these items do return but with a whole lot of mess in between this is a dual timeline we get to see several perspectives and it's just a majestic book that had me crying it's gonna be in my top 10 of 2021 i swear it I think it suits it really well because like I said there is a loss of innocence on multiple fronts in this. There's toxic relationships both familial and romantic. I think the best way that describes the um, pain and the raw loss that is all too well is in this book. So many people have lost so many things and you can tell the pain and kind of the sorrow that comes with that loss and that grieving. It just feels like she's grieving and this entire book is all includes all of that lots of trigger warnings i believe i left a review for it so i will also like i said every book that is mentioned here will have a review so if y'all are like what are your actual thoughts on it now 22 is a direct response to all too well you know someone fucked up your life and you're looking for a new fresh break you're looking for something to spice it up this character isn't exactly 22 i realized that i don't have a lot of characters that i've read about that are in the 22 range but i ended up going with arsenic and adobo by mia piman and salads is a, an adult kind of cozy thriller i say a light thriller because cozy sounds weird to me but it's a cozy thriller following young lila who is who has returned from college after a messy breakup with her fiance and you know essentially just kind of drops out to help out in her in her family's restaurant back at home now here is the kicker she is you know looking for a new situation that is until she like a new like fresh start just to start over again have all these bad things behind her and then and then she runs into her ex who things didn't end up on good terms with just did not so instead of ending up on with this fresh start this new blast from the past ends up dying on her watch from the food that she fed him you guys are like what the heck does this have to do with 22 i think it's just one of those things where like she's looking so strongly for a fresh start to get away from everything that i think that it is like also again part of the healing process to just accept that like sometimes you you, you need to learn i don't even know where i was going with that what but again she is trying to look for a new start which i think is the basis of 22 you know looking for a new year you know that your past year has been ruined trying to find some light in what was a ruined day the year prior so good times i really 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 remind the book just reminded me of it for some reason because it was so i don't know i, I can't put my finger on it but it, it, it somehow fits and i don't know how the next song is i almost do and this is just a song about 
basically like you guys just newly broke up and you're sitting there like you know i'm sure you think about me and sometimes i get the urge to contact you and sometimes i almost do and it's like that weird repetitive cycle that comes with just being very unsure about your relationship your romance and what happens after i ended up going with this one was another easy one for me and that was history's all you love me by adam silvera I think this is a perfect fit because this is an, a, a YA contemporary novel following young Griffin who recently had lost his first love. You're like, what the heck, Therese? Who lost his first love and in the process of trying to get over his grief and get over this uh, hole in his chest, he ends up running into the ex-boyfriend of his ex-boyfriend. So it's kind of that wild thing. And we do get to see like some past bits of like the relationship growing or like his and ex his ex-boyfriend's relationship growing all the way to the breakup and we do see kind of the repetition of like i want you back but i don't as well as just like that very like break break up thought process that i think suits really well with i almost do it's a good one it's not it's probably yeah it's like bottom three of adam silvera's books that i've read i've only really read like four of his books so i can't really say much but I have read his book, so this is like bottom, like the, this is the top three, I'd like to say. And it definitely, um, it definitely touches on those, like I, I repeat, like those repetitive kind of thoughts you have, like, should I reach out? Do they miss me? I bet they do. And then you pick up the phone and you realize, you know what? I don't need to do that. And you set it back down. It just has that repetition to it, and I think it suits it really well. The next song is We Are Never Get, We Are Never Ever, Ever Getting Back Together. I think I just said a lyric. It's fine. But we all know the song. Again, it's one of the hits from the original release. It was stuck in everyone's heads whether we wanted it to be or not. It's actually one of the few songs that I listened to avidly when Red was re released. I don't know why because I was with someone at the time. So I think it was my brain trying to drop messages. But I ended up going with Crown of Midnight by Sarah J Mass. You guys are like, what the heck? I can't give a lot of spoilers, but there are a few breakups in this book. And one of them specifically just screams, we are never, ever, 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 ever getting back together. That's all I can say, because this, this is a sequel to Throne of Glass. And it is a YA high fantasy following young Selena Sardothian as she is released by the Slave Camps of Endovier only to participate in the King's Champion. And after, you know, serving the King for X amount of time, she is free to do whatever she pleases. But yeah, I can't give much on it, but there is a really big breakup. And I think if Selena were around in present day to hear Taylor Swift, she would be humming this in someone's ear. Moving on to the next song, which is Stay, Stay, Stay. This is just a very lighthearted song. I don't even have to repeat the lyrics like, Stay, stay, stay. I've been loving you for quite some time, time, time. It's just a very cute and happy song, which I think a lot of Red is just, it really illustrates the ups and downs of a really, of like breaking up where you're like happy and sad and angry and sad and happy and sad. And then you're like, okay, yeah, it's good. And then you're back up and down. But this one, I, it was like a simple, it was like an easy, but also hard thing to choose. And I ended up going with Socking Jack the Ripper, rather the entire series by Carrie Maniscalco. This is a YA historical fiction novel following young, Audrey Rose that she's trying to become like a forensic scientist and society isn't letting her. That is until Sock Jack the Ripper starts killing and she's pulled into the fray. And you guys are like, why does this have, what is this morbid, what is this morbid little thing gotta do with Stay Stay Stay, which is like a super happy kind of upbeat like poppy song. Thomas and Audrey Rose, if I could cut like wrap up their relationship, I think it would be that song because it's just like, it's just such a happy song amidst a depressing album and in that depressing like like this the romance is such a happy little thing aside from the things that happen and that is encompasses such a very dark and dire topic and it i think their romance just screams like i've loved you for some time please stay we get into an argument that you're gonna run away but instead you stayed and it's just they're just so cute and I think the song really fits. The, la the next song is um, The Last Time, which is, I believe, uh, featuring... I'm pretty sure he's from a band that I actually listen to, but I have zero memory right now. 
But this song is basically just kind of giving like your last little lifeline to the person you love. You know, you guys have been arguing a lot, just fight after fight after fight, and you, you're you done asking for the changes that you're looking for. And so this is your lifeline. You're like, this is the last time I'm going to come here and apologize. This is the last time I'm going to give you a chance. This is it. And that's it. This one is also another very easy choice for me, and that was I ended up going with After I Do by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is an adult contemporary novel following this young couple who got together very quickly, not very quickly, like in the span of a few years, I'd like to say very young, and now they, after like almost a decade of being together, they realize they actually kind of hate each other, and their last little lifeline, their last time of trying to save their relationship and see if they can make it work is to separate for a year and see and see other people grow as people and see if like when they come back if they miss each other or if it's finally time for them to just end the relationship. I think it fits super well because we do get to see that kind of like lifeline those lifelines were being thrown as the book progresses as we kind of see past relations their past getting together, them being together, and then them separating. We get to see that like progress and then we see them finally hit their breaking point and go, this is it. Like, I can't keep doing this. It feels like we're two separate people. When in reality, they were just not listening to each other. I think it's a very fitting thing to be like, to have the, to, like, the kind of parallels that like, this is your last lifeline, this is our last lifeline. So, recommend this book, it's sad. It's very sad and it put me through an existential crisis and like my partner can attest to it because he was like where are all these thoughts coming from I thought we were fine and I'm sitting here like what if we're making a mistake the next song is holy ground this is kind of there's a lyric so one of the things that I kind of spotted with this was um, the chorus and it was like and darling it was good never looking down and right there where we stood was holy ground then there was um spinning in a girl in a brand new dress we had this big white city all to ourselves um and then tonight i'm gonna dance for all that we've been through but i don't want to dance if i'm not with you this what this book this book that i chose isn't so much for the romantic aspect but the platonic aspect because i feel like that that song wraps up this platonic relationship very well and the process of like not being able to really do anything because you don't have that person anymore i ended up going with crescent city by sarah j mass this is an adult this is her introduction into adult literature an adult high fantasy basically set in an amalgamation of every single myth you could ever think of. So this is after the death of Bryce's best friend Danica and we see Bryce go through the process of grief and just not being able to do the things that she once loved. She doesn't go out anymore, she doesn't drink, she doesn't, she is very much stuck in that state of like, I lost my best friend, how am I supposed to enjoy life without them? Which I think very much encompasses that line of, um, I don't want to dance if I'm not dancing with you, because Danica and her were like tied at the waist. They were stronger than strong so that lost kind of a blow to her and it makes sense considering the fact that like this was her best friend and I think that holy ground kind of like encompasses that like friendship of just like pure love and adoration for each other that you lose and you're just kind of stuck trying to pick up the pieces and figure out who you are after it so, so the next song is sad beautiful tragic and these lyrics specifically stuck out to me when i was listening to the song and that's gonna be like in dreams i meet you in warm conversation we both wake in lonely beds in different cities and times it and time is taking its sweet time erasing you and you've got your demons and darling they all look like me y'all probably know where i'm gonna go with this so let's just kind of go let's just pull it out now because i haven't used this book yet so I'm very excited, but that is the Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This is a retelling of the Achilles myth, following it through the eyes of Patroclus, from their youth all the way into adulthood, all the way, you know, until the end. I think this fits because I think come the Trojan War, when things ensue, I'm not going to spoil it because it's not even much of a spoiler if you have read the myth, Pat dies. Pat dies. He's killed. So a lot of like the things that's keeping Achilles from moving on and helping finish this war and help him grieve properly is the fact that his lover, his best friend, his everything is now gone. And it's like they had this beautiful love that spanned decades only for it to be taken away. And it's just tragic. And it's, and it fits. It just fits. Okay. The next song is Lucky One. This one, 
Isn't it probably another no-brainer to you guys if I just say out these lyrics? You had it figured out since you were in school. Everybody loves pretty, everybody loves cool. So overnight you look like a 60s queen. Another name goes up in lights like diamonds in the sky. This one specifically, it, it's no biggie. It's no, it's no surprise. The Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo by Teal Drinkets Reed. No surprise. I re I used this, I think, for Harry Styles. I ended up using hair this one and Daisy Jones for Harry. But I think that it just fits. Like, my friend Ethel, we were talking about it, and she just started yelling at me. She's like, if you don't use Evelyn Hugo, it doesn't make any sense. It's the perfect fit. And I agree with her. I think it just fits that this that relationship, that love, and just kind of the adoration everyone had for Evelyn. Um, it, it just fits. And um, if I didn't use it, I would have gotten yelled at, and she would have sent a boot over to my place in, like, a little, like, round out, like a little jack-in-the-box, and a boot just... She's right. Uh, <laughs> I don't know what else to say. This is a historical fiction following Evelyn Hugo, who ends up contacting a down, a downtrodden, upcoming um, journalist, Monique, and ends up asking her to write her expose on her entire life, including her seven husbands and her actual great love. It fits. It ju it just fits, and I can't explain it. Like, if you don't think that it fits, I think you need to get your eyes checked but it fits it fits it fits just try it, it fits just trust me the next song is everything has changed which features ed sheeran this is one of my favorite songs on the album like if we had a friends to lover song it's that song it, it's that song but this is just basically about like waking up one day and realizing that your feelings and your thoughts and the person that you have had your entire life around you has shifted it's great it's my favorite and I ended up going with, I think I also ended up using this for a different, for, I think Harry, but I could be wrong. And that is Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. This is an, a, a YA historical fantasy following the Shadowhunters, but this is set after the Infernal Devices in the Edwardian era, Edwardian era where we get to see their children run around, be Shadowhunters, and make a mess of everything. Now when I say everything has changed, I mean Cordelia and James. They thought of each other as friends, or Cordelia had this really huge crush on him, and then one day James sees her, and something in his little brain starts to rattle. And just, it rattles. And so all it really does, these past two books, it's just been rattling. He doesn't know what's going on, he just hears like a little marble running around when he tries to shake his head. <laughs> but it's just, a, I really, I really, I really enjoy, I think that this fits it very well. Because we do get to see that shift in James's head when he starts to see Cordelia from a friend to something more. And he's like, oh. And then the rattling kind of centers on his head finally. And he's like, oh. And then things happen. It starts to rattle again. But it fits. It suits it. I love it. And we're good. The next one is Starlight. And it's just another like fun, happy song. Kind of just like really digging your heels into the love. And just enjoying the, the time. And like dancing around. And just like... Really getting, like I said, digging your heels in the relationship and just like imagining everything that you could be in this situation. And it's just like a very fun, lighthearted kind of thing that you can escape from. Like the, that's, what the, that's what it gets me is that the romance is like fun, you're enjoying it right now. And it's like an escape for you to dream about the future and dream about what everything else is. I'm going to have to go with Last Night in the Telegraph Club by Melinda Lowe. This is a YA historical fiction. Um, it's gay. Following young Lily Hu, who is in kind of in the middle of this um, the communism situation, she is Chinese and an immigrant, and also is starting to mess with her sexuality a little bit. Both of her identities are not very welcome at the current moment because you know, no one likes the gays and no one likes the Asians during this time period. That is until she steps into the Telegraph Club which is a club that wholeheartedly accepts her for who she is and there she starts to find herself falling for someone. Again, I think it fits. I think it suits kind of the idea of getting away and not be and not having to be yourself and then just really digging yourself into like your dreams and your love and your relationship and just loving every minute of it. It's great. I love it. The next song is Begin Again and again this 
is it, it, it's basically telling you what happens after a relationship you know you're starting over again you're starting to fall in love again you're letting yourself be open i ended up going with after you by georgia moyes this is an adult romance novel following the events of me before you me before you is again an adult romance following young lu who is trying to figure out her place in this world and takes up a job where she can um, take care of a paraplegic young man named will trainer and things ensue this is the aftermath of it spoilers will dies i think we all of us have seen or heard the movie or seen or seen the controversy around it but i think after you kind of does follow the grieving process of a loved one losing that loved one and then slowly reopening yourself up back to to being okay again and then back to romance again and i think it just processes that situation very nicely i enjoyed it i think it suits begin again really well the next song is the moment i knew this is again a more sad song it's such an up and down album but this is a sadder song kind of realizing the moment you knew when the relationship was over Re like where you realize that you can't continue on with this anymore it's not not only worth your time but it's not worth your heartache anymore and i ended up going with chain of iron by cassandra clare it's a is the sequel to Chain of Gold. Again, we got James and his little rattles going around and Cordelia kind of watching everything unfold and realizing that this is too much for her. So I think it suits it. It suits it very well and it hurts my heart of how much it suits it. Especially that one scene. That one scene. And then you knew it was over. You knew. You knew. Like in her heart. She knew. She knew deep down that she was like, yeah, this is it. This is. This is it. The next song is actually Come Back Be Here. This is just a song about you wishing the person that you that you love was there in the present moment. I ended up going with Wolf Song by TJ Klune. This is a YA or paranormal romance following a young boy who ends up finding out that there are werewolves among other things in his life. There's a specific portion in this book where the love interest and the main character are separated for a good chunk of their life. A good few years i believe and it just gave me all those vibes i had to double check with tb and i made tb cry so i'm gonna count this decision as a win the next song is girl at home which is basically all about a girl trying to get this guy that she does like she does find him attractive she said she thinks she's he's cute to go home to his girlfriend because he's about to cheat on her this one was really hard because i don't have a lot of books about cheating i it's one of those tropes that i am not the biggest fan of Truly, I'm not the biggest fan of them. But the next song is the saddest song. It's the saddest song. I can't listen to it. Like I listened to it once, and I just had to like use the lyrics to like figure out what song to do, what what to do. I, I don't but this one is Ronan, and it's about a young little boy who lost his life. Um, I I don't know what to do for this song. I just needed something to kind of encompass that loss of life, that really kind of heavy kind of grieving. I ended up using a really dark book for it. Um, I, I I went with Sadie by Courtney Summers. This is a, a, a mishmash, but at the, the heart of it, the heart of it is that it's about a young girl who's grieving the loss of her sister and trying to find out exactly what happened to her. Um, I think that this is fitting very well because Sadie has been, is Sadie to have been the one to have taken care of her younger sister who basically raised her younger sister and to have that loss, that loss of life is just devastated Sadie and destroyed her in as so many ways possible. And I think the grieving that Sadie silently goes through in this book suits the grieving that fits Ronan. Again, I don't read a lot about books where young children die. Um, it's just not something I personally gravitate toward. Um, so this is a very difficult one for me to choose. I, I, I wanted to focus mainly on the grieving aspect of that and that loss of life and that like I, if we had more time kind of vibe that Ronan kind of gives me. So I gave that to Sadie because I feel like that matches a little better than any other situations where thing when you have when there are books about a loss of a child in a like a very sad way it's always driven by something else so it's very hard to pinpoint so i did end up going with sadie just because again that loss of life and that grief was kind of the focal point 
of her driving force and her need to figure out what happened. And I think that's also the driving force for the song is just that grief and that loss and that like, I wish kind of scenario. The next song is Better Man. This is just like kind of that instance where you break up and you're like, you know, if you were a better person, we could have worked out. We would have had something great. It's a money break. We would have had something great, but you weren't. So that sucks. <laughs> I'm trying to make light of it because it's just, these are all really sad songs and I cried listening to Better Man. So I just... But I ended up going with The Red Queen by Victoria Avia. This is a YA, almost historical, dystopian fantasy kind of novel following a young mayor who ends up finding out that she is silver-blooded, right? No, that she has powers like the, like the silver-bloods who are basically gods on Earth, but she is like, uh, she has red blood, which makes her a commoner. So hence the term, Red Queen. There is a plot twist in here, and I know it only gets worse from there. So this book is a perfect fit for that song because the emotional roller coaster that it had me going through was a wild ride and I didn't enjoy it and I know it gets worse in the series. The next song is Nothing New and that's basically just a song about like how you're kind of like, she, she basically says it in the, so in the song itself but she's like this really big, um, she's big right now, she's a big focal point in the situation. I think it just describes kind of that like, well, will you still want me around when I'm not this new toy, basically? Will you still want me when I'm old, when someone new has come along and that piques your interest just a little bit more? And I ended up actually going with Daughters of Darkness from the um, Night World by L.J. Smith. This is the second book in the series following the set of young vampire girls who run away from home only to find themselves in the middle of something kind of sinister in this small whole bunk town that they moved to. I ended up seeing because there's a specific couple, the main couple actually, or one of them I should say, that really kind of encompasses like, I get that you like me now and that you enjoy this, but will you still want me several years down the line? It just gives me those vibes and I really, it just fits. I know it's more like on a like singer, like a, a person to their following kind of thing, but I feel like it also could fit for like a romantic vibe, platonic vibe, everything in between, my cats, all that stuff. So I think it just, it, it suits it just really nicely. The next song is Babe, and I ended up going with um, the lyrics specifically, like where it's like, I'm here on the kitchen floor, you call, but I won't hear it. You said no one else, how could you do this, babe? What about your promises, promises? Then you really blew it, we ain't getting through this one, this is the last time I'll call you, this is the last time I'll ever call you, babe. Basically, it's a song about like, someone screwing up so badly that no matter what you guys are never getting back together uh you can he it, this is the song i ended up going with and that is gonna have to be ps i still love you by jenny hans is the sequel to all to all the boys i loved before following laura jean and peter kavinsky as they try to take the relationship to the next level and by that i mean i ended up using this just because so many things get in the way in this book so many things specifically a storyline that was removed in the movie to make peter seem more um understandable i guess which i wasn't a big fan of but it just was well, that bit what i wasn't a big fan of but that i think that storyline that was excluded in the movie is a big part in this book which i think is the bigger reason and kind of the main reason why this book fits the song really nicely so i I think it suits it really well. I think it has the message of like, I don't know how we're gonna get through this. Like, why did you do this? I thought we were good. I thought we were that. Like, I, I won't pick up your calls. I refuse to. All those things that like you feel deep down in your bones when something like that happens. And it's kind of implied that you cheat. So it's just, it's just a mishmash of a lot of things. <laughs> the next book is actually like the book prior to the one I just said. Um, let me again look up the lyrics because again these were the books that like came really quickly to me when I was looking up stuff so like I haven't I didn't study it as much as I should have so the lyrics that really fit this book specifically to all the boys I loved before by Jenny Han which involves Laura Jean giving her letters away or having her letters accidentally mailed out to all the boys she's written to 
and all the stuff that ensues with it is because you could be the one that I love, I could be the one that you dream message in a bottle is all I can do, standing here hoping it gets to you, you could be what, the one that I keep and I can be the reason you can't sleep at night, message in a bottle is all I can do, standing here hoping it gets to you. I think it suits specifically the bit where it goes standing here hoping it gets to you because she writes these letters saying that she's never going to mail them but she has she stamps them she has like their like addresses on them so clearly this is like her message in a bottle and like kind of like not only getting her feelings out but also like hoping that somehow they feel the same and she has like this memorabilia to be able to like be like yeah I loved you first kind of situation I think it suits it very well again two books that I didn't really have to like super like in depth think about when I was planning this video so perfect the next song is I bet you think about me and this is just a song about a breakup where you're like you know what I'm sure you miss me I'm sure you think I'm the one that got away I'm sure like yeah and I like you know she tried to fit in and everything and it just didn't work out but the, the book that I ended up choosing is The Cruel Prince by Holly Black. This is a YA high fantasy following young Jude who is kidnapped by the Fae and is forced to live in a society. It suits it, especially her relationship with Cardin. It's a very love-hate relationship where, she's very, where they somehow think about each other, but not. And she's trying everything she can to be one of the Fae. She tries to become better or worse of them. And it's just this amalgamation of feelings that come in with I think also very suits like I bet you think about me because like for you to be wishing that they think about you you still have to feel a certain type of way for them so I think that like it suits it so yeah the next song is forever winter no okay this part here reminds me of it and that's all this time I didn't know you were breaking down I'd fall to pieces on the floor if you weren't around too young to know it gets better I'll be the summer sun for you forever forever winter if you go um, he seems fine most of the time, forcing smiles and never minds. His laugh is a symphony when the lights go out, it's hard to breathe. I pull at every thread, trying to solve the puzzles in his head. Live my life scared to death, he'll decide to leave instead. I ended up going with Taste of Blood Wine by Frida Warren, because this is an adult, an adult paranormal romance following this young girl who doesn't fit in with society, that is, until she meets a mysterious man who happens to be a vampire. Ooh. But... I really enjoyed this book. I think it suits it very well because, again, there is a bit of separation between the two characters told around that was the middle of the book. Hello, it is editing, editing Teresa. I have been editing this video for four hours, and this is the third time my battery has died for the video that I'm currently that you are watching right now, at least on the video, not my phone battery. Um, but I somehow misplaced the data of the book that I was talking about. I don't know what happened. It's fine. But basically during the midpoint of this book, there's kind of a third act separation. And that's kind of where that happens. And it ends up that, you know, there's going to kind of the depression where it's like, you know, it's, it's it, life is not the same. It's not as warm. It's not as sunny and bright while you're gone. That's all I wanted to say. But yeah, I think that's where the book fits really well, especially like that. This I can't really spoil it too much because it is a pretty big like it, it it is it is like it goes in pretty deep in the book for this like lyrics to make sense but it makes sense in my head because that middle point does um really determine like kind of m makes sense for the book if that makes any kind of <laughs> it makes sense for the book and the middle point where that happens makes sense for the song as well because it we do get to see what they do without each other that's what i'm trying to go with the next song is Run, which also features Ed Sheeran. I love Ed Sheeran. Really, the chorus is what got me hooked on this book. It made me realize that this is a perfect fit. Is that it's like, and run, run like you'd run from the law. Darling, let's run, run from it all. We can go where our eyes can take us. Go where no one else is. Run, ooh, we'll run, ooh, we'll run. But the book I ended up going with is one that's actually missing, and you can see it. <laughs> You can see the book that I chose right there, and that's going to have to be The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This is an adult um, historical fantasy set in a... But this is set in a historical non-linear timeline following this um, competition between these two magicians who end up finding out that they are um, falling in love with each other. It's the shortened version that I can say of this. And I think it fits it really well because I know that these two would specifically love to run away from this competition that's keeping them apart and will eventually kill them. 
um, but they are unable to. So it's just like one of those things where like the relationship is a little bit more hidden, a little bit more under the radar. Um, and if they could, they would run away just to be with each other. I think it suits it very well. It's very heartbreaking. And the song itself also made me tear up. It's just, this is just a mess of an album for me emotionally. And like my therapist is going to have a fun time in December when I see her. We're on the last book. It is eight o'clock. I want to take off my makeup, do a mask, take a shower, <laughs> and eat dinner. <laughs> so the last book is The Very First Night. Um, the, I'm gonna look up the lyrics for this because I am now very tired. Basically, it's just a song about missing someone terribly and you wish it was the first night. I think. I'm very tired. I'm so sorry. This is the, ver the second verse is what got me for this book, and that is, And so it was, we never saw it coming, not trying to fall in love, but we did like children running. Back then we didn't know, we were built to fall apart, we broke the status quo, then we broke each other's hearts. Those lyrics stood out to me, and I ended up having to go with another Taylor Jenkins Reid book. And that is Forever Interrupted by Taylor Jenkins Reid. This is an adult, another one of her backlisted works, contemporary romance novel following a young couple who literally get married after six months. Very fast-paced romance, and then he dies. So, and it's just, I think it's just all about like missing that person that you met on the very first night and just wishing that you were back at that situation where you met and you guys were falling head over heels for each other and everything was good and dandy and fine. Because now he's dead. So it is no longer good and daddy, dandy and fine. So, <sighs> but that is it for this video. As you guys have progressed watching this video, you guys have seen have seen how slowly exhausted I get because of all the little breaks I had to take in between because my camera was dying. But if you guys enjoyed this video, let me know if you guys have any more ideas or if you guys in, uh, agreed or disagreed with my ideas. If you guys do disagree, let me know what book you think should have been in place of that one. But until next time, hope you guys are having a wonderful week and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!